<laughs> well, I'm a glad great segue for that is we're going to the next uh, thing, and uh, it's basically how y'all's quarantine is going. I'm imagining we're all kind of doing about the same thing, uh, diving into a bunch of comics, you know, music, TV, uh, maybe a little work on the side. Uh, so, uh, Reese, how, how's your quarantine been going? Well, um, I mean, we're two months into this now, uh, so we're we're in this. <laughs> and so basically it's just really been um finding any distraction that i can um uh, outside of you know working from home uh it's been an interesting experience because you you don't necessarily have that separation of work and home anymore and so i really have to like force myself to be like okay it's no longer time to work i can you know close my laptop and uh go on and do something else uh creative or just kind of relax and uh, let my mind just kind of fizzle for a while. So I don't have to have to go crazy during all this. Yeah. You know, to me, I think time has become irrelevant. I just, I, I wake up, which is great. Um, and then I just go, well, it's a new I day, so. I guess. I don't know if it's <laughs> Tuesday or Saturday, but I'll make the most of my time. <laughs> for me, every day I consider Saturday. It's just yeah. there's seven Saturdays in the week now. And I work about five of those. So, yeah, pretty much. What about you, Taylor? I know you're you're still out and working as well. Are you working from home or actually having to go in? No. So, first responders, especially me, I work in a crime lab all day. So I never really got the whole quarantine thing. I still have to get up and go to work every day and then come home. So, uh, especially with all these people that do get quarantined and all that, and they have a emergency response they need us to go to then I, I get not only exposed to what's going on out in the real world but I get exposed to what's going on in people's homes and all that kind of stuff too whenever we have to go out to all these scenes and process and do our documentation and all that kind of stuff so I never really got a quarantine I, I just kind of kept going with what I was doing they just kind of limited what we could do but we never stopped working gotcha so they might put some restrictions on things but for the most part you're still you know, toughen it out. Still rolling, still rolling every single day, wake up, go to work, come home. And I'm also on call. So I, every time I get off work and I start to rewind and relax and all that kind of stuff, there's always a possibility that I'll get called to go work overtime and all that kind of stuff on a scene. So uh, it's like negative quarantine, right? So that's yeah. where I get more exposed to things while I'm out there. So you would say, or it's what we call it now, essential. <laughs> yeah well <laughs> there's always going to be bad guys whether people are quarantined or not there's always going to be crime so i wish and i'm gonna be real i wish that people would like take a quarantine pause and like stay at home and not go out and do things that require you know police assistance and all that kind of stuff and response so i wish i wish i was quarantined if more bad guys would be quarantined i guess i could be that's so selfish of them, you know. I bet if we put a bunch of flyers <laughs> up or something, surely they'll go, oh, you know what? That is selfish of us. We'll, we'll stop. <laughs> crime is closed today. <laughs> Strongly worded letter. Listen. Not do it. No more crime. Please. <laughs> no more crime. Please. We're in a quarantine. <laughs> stop. Apparently crime is essential as well. Yes. It is to some. Okay. <laughs> and the sad part is you're seeing all these people that are staying quarantined at their home with their loved ones that can only like – like be with each other for a certain amount of time whenever there's no quarantine that are now staying at home constantly with these people and is driving everyone insane. Yep. So obviously things are going to happen. So, yeah. I'm sure. Domestic but violence if I'm going to be yeah. climbed all the way up. And, well, you would think so, but I've actually been looking at all that statistics and all that at mm -hmm. particularly the agency that I work for. And we haven't seen as much like as I thought we would, but there is still some, but it's not as much as I believe there would have been considering the amount of time that people are spending together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I would have. Wow. Well, yeah. I guess eventually it got over. There's kind of like, Oh, I guess we did all the fighting we can do to make peace. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're going to have to be with each other for a while. We might as well try to get along. We are married by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, golly. It definitely is a, a test of, of marriages and relationships right now because uh, you're not used to mm -hmm. seeing your spouse or significant other this, you know, this long during the day. I mean, it's great, but at the same time, it's such a shift of the routine that you're like, oh, 
well, here we are still, <laughs> you know, it's like, you're not at work or I'm not at work. And, um, you know, we usually have this many hours together and now we have this many hours. So it's like, what does that look like? Uh, it's been an interesting, uh, I guess what they may call it experiment. <laughs> um, but, uh, it's definitely, um, definitely interesting, you know, as the output of all of this. Well, you're taking away all their de-stressors and people consider work to be a de-stressor if that's something that they really enjoy doing. So it's either transition from home life to work life and they can't do that. So now it's just built up tension. Mm -hmm. So, and they take away gyms and hairstyle places and all these places where people go to like talk and relieve stress and all that kind of stuff. So it's a good thing that they've just now started reestablishing all those places so people can actually get back out and start finding ways to relax and find ways to de-stress and get away and all that. So mm -hmm. slowly making progress. Yeah. What I was saying is um, for me, um, the, the work home transition um, I've been missing out. Usually I, you know, leave my building and get on a train and ride for 30 minutes to get home and kind of de-stress in that way. And without that, you know, without that uh, transition piece in between work and home, it's, it's, it's just me getting up from my chair, walking to the living room. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, a, a weird um, replacement for that. Uh, or if I do something else after work, I'm still sitting in my office. So it's, it's one of those, it's a weird, weird thing where I feel like I'm in like one place a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why you for sure have to go out for a walk every now and then, or, you know, get a breath of fresh air do something that'll keep you sane and not on the brink of insanity. Excellent. So, yeah. Well, I guess that about hits the nail on the head there. Um, yeah, quarantine. We're all in it together. <laughs> all right. So let's see what's next on the list. I think this is going to be a good one for everyone. The Justice League Snyder Cut, it is real and it is releasing 2021. Yes. So, yes. Uh, Reese, Reese, what can you tell us about that? So uh, Zack Snyder's cut of Justice League uh, was something that nobody thought was actually real, but he kept saying on the internet that, that th it is real, it's something that exists. Um, and what started that was after the first version of Justice League was put out a few years ago, um, he actually announced a few months after it was released that there was another version. And the reason that there was another version is because he had to step out of the production of the, the original movie um, to do uh, due to some personal things uh, and that uh, caused them to have to bring in a new director Josh Whedon who also did Avengers to kind of finish out production reshoot some things and rework the script uh, and as well as the studio getting involved in giving all their edits and things that kind of changed the whole vision of the movie which I, I liked when I first walked out of the movie I believe we all got to see it together um, a few years ago but um but what was interesting to me is that there's this extra cut of this movie, this basically the director's cut of Zack Snyder's original vision, um, which is apparently, you know, much longer, has a lot more, uh, more characters, a couple more plot points. Um, so basically um, that got released um, or the press release came out that this is a real thing and it's coming out next year. So I, for one, am excited for I think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be much better than what we received uh, a couple years ago. And, um, and yeah, so Taylor, what do you know about it, and how do you feel about it, and what are you looking forward to? So this is definitely a hard topic as well because I hate, I hate what happened to his family. I hate – but I, everyone understands why, and everyone understood that – you were never going to get what he was going to offer, especially when you bring in someone with a different mindset. When you have a director that comes in and says, look, what y'all saw in theaters was probably one fourth what I did. Mm -hmm. So you have so much opportunity, whether it's character development, story, everything. Okay. You have, when, whenever it kind of like you said, when they did the hashtag release the Snyder cut back in 2000 and, uh, 2017? 2017. Yeah. I mean, obviously everyone knew something was up. When you have Jason Momoa sending out tweets saying, release the Snyder Cut, everyone is just like, there is one. We need it. He saw it. 
we need it now. So I think when he said that they were what going to do, where's my note? I wrote down some notes. When he said they have six, six TV style chapters that they're going to release of Justice League footage, nothing but excitement because there is sky is the limit on what could possibly have happened in his story. He wanted to be darker than it was. You get a real DC just urge to just see what happened. Like what they had like a possible 20 to $30 million budget, but they think what they think can't say for certain what they think is going to happen. So I am absolutely thrilled that they're finally going to do it because I don't know. I, like you said, I enjoyed it for what it was. I enjoy anything that has DC content. I'm in. Okay. I actually enjoyed the movie. I wish there was more to it. And now we're going to get that. Another great thing is you were saying that, you know, he, he was going to make it much darker and uh, a little bit more involved. Uh, that was part of the downside whenever he left production and they brought in a new director uh, and the studio got more involved, the studio told him, Hey, we want to lighten this up. We want to change the story. And so it became a completely different movie. So I can understand where the, the original, you know, creator is like, well, I want them to see what I did. Um, and so that's, that's a really interesting situation that this has kind of created because like something like this hasn't really happened. I mean, there's been director's cuts in the past, but those have been like, you know, the studio planned on doing it. This is one of those things where everybody just like hassled Warner brothers to like release it, release it. <laughs> okay, fine. Whatever. You want, we'll, do it. we'll put it on HBO max. And so that will be an interesting way to get people to subscribe to that streaming service because it won't be in the theaters but they'll have the opportunity mm. to stream it from their home whenever they want to. Um, and, and that's just really, really cool. Potentially four hours of director's cut footage, man. You don't, this just, wow, what is it? it? needs to happen now. I can't wait until 2021. Elaine's what yeah. is the consensus of this news and, um, and the possibility that, that Dark Side could be in this movie. Yes, I mean, like I'll, everything else said at this point, uh, and also to me, I feel like the plot could have been a lot, lot uh, bigger than what it was. Um, to me, I actually, I liked the way the characters interacted in it. I liked their relationship a lot and how they're introduced. Um, that, to me, was a, my favorite part of the film, but like I said, I feel like the plot suffered because of uh, Snyder's absence, so I think that for sure, that's what I'm most excited to see is, I mean, I'm surely... I mean, surely he focused more on developing the plot and making it a lot more in depth. So that's what I'm really hoping to see from it. So recently I actually went back and watched, uh, I, I saw uh, Batman versus Superman and Justice League and kind of watched them and to see how different they were. Uh, and what's interesting is like Batman versus Superman, it's a longer movie. I watched the extended cut of that. It's a longer movie, um, kind of fleshes things out a little bit better than the theatrical version did. And I kept rewatching it. There was a few things that I thought were maybe silly or goofy or didn't make sense at the time. But after rewatching it again, it made a lot more sense remembering Zack Snyder's vision. Um, with, with the hindsight, it definitely kind of changed my opinion on Batman versus Superman. But then watching Justice League again, a lot of like the tone, even the color grading was different. Uh, the way it was shot, uh, the way the characters acted, it was just so different. Um, I mean, while it still fit in the story that they were telling as a, as a separate piece on its own, it, it kind of didn't meld with Man of Steel and Batman v Superman as well. So that's, that's why I'm really excited to see what this new cut of Justice League will do to those three films, watching them all together. Yeah, absolutely. So there you go. We just, we won't know until we know, you know? 21. Sad day. Had to wait. I know. I know, Taylor. Now I'm wishing it was 2021 already. <laughs> I think we well, shoot, maybe by that time this quarantine will be over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Hopefully.